Welcome back, everybody. Today, I'm going to be kind of previewing and giving my initial thoughts on Flora Bell, who we've just seen uh, being given a character teaser for AFK Journey. If you aren't familiar, uh, the game has been out for a little bit, but we haven't quite seen exactly what her, uh, I guess, what the next upcoming characters or new characters that they're going to announce are. We've had a couple things like events and things of that extent that have been announced, but nothing about characters. So let's just kind of Take a quick look. I'm going to do this in 1.5 speed just because uh, if you guys want to see it yourselves, you can do so. But she looks very cool. Um, again, they did a really nice little animation trailer. She's got like a couple helpers. It looks like they're almost mini-me's of her, which is really cool. It's fairly like cute. It's, you know, uh, her helpers or like her summons, her minions, whatever you want to call it. But... She looks a little bit similar or from the uh, from the same kind of area or from the same storyline as Laika. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, I'm not that big of a like a story enjoyer like that. But regardless, this is a really crazy animation trailer, honestly. Uh, and I mean, take a look at this, right? This is just for their first character. And I will kind of spoil her. I don't think her kit looks... I mean, okay, I guess thinking about it, her kit does seem a little bit crazy because she seems pretty versatile, but let's just take a look at exactly what they're showing, and let me slow it down to one time so you can actually see what her kit does. So, uh, very slick animation, by the way, very nice, very nice, but, so this is her gameplay showcase, and they don't show exactly any uh, stats or anything, and of course, there's the games under development kind of preview or a kind of disclaimer beforehand, but... It looks like, uh, uh, of course, she makes use of these three little minions that allow her to do different things. Now, in terms of overgrowth, they don't exactly show what this does, but the assumption here is that based on the little, or like based on what little we do see, there's either a heal or there's somewhat of a barrier here alongside, I think that's life drain alongside haste, which is, of course, really nice because you might be familiar with something like that present on a character like Coco. Uh, Coco also has... Uh, I believe the life drain that she provides or she provides haste, uh, which is really nice. And the barrier is also really important uh, depending on how the target of this or the targeting of the buffs works, though. Uh, we'll have to see whether or not the buffing from uh, Flora Bell is actually important. Uh, all we kind of see right now is that she provides buffs to, the, to her allies. I don't think she herself is actually being received or receiving this. Uh, but the next thing that we have is Tiny Sharpshooter, which looks like she just has her one of her allies or one of her minion spawns uh, act as a damage dealer now again as you can tell she still doesn't have the buff so that makes me think that the shield or the mitigation that she provides through the blue bar is exclusive just to her allies or it might just be the summons because again we don't have enough information about her kit to quite tell that being said though uh, i do think that Again, giving out uh, a couple of minions or spawns to kind of tank either, you know, wolves that are coming to charge at you or assassins is extremely, extremely valuable. Uh, where I am specifically right now when it comes to AFK journeys, AFK stages, is the point where things kind of just come out so fast that I can't deal with it. It just one-shots me and I'm just instantly dead. And I think it would be safe to assume that she's a wilder character based on all that we see involving her and leaves and nature. So that will also pair really well, especially if you are someone that is trying to build towards a late game build uh, that involves characters like Iron, Grandma Donnie, uh, Andre, a bunch of the wilder specific characters, I think great, uh, gain great value specifically from having uh, the wilders uh, or another wilder addition to the team composition. You could also argue that Alongside this damage dealing uh, skill, her final skill, I don't know if this is, I think this might be her ultimate, yeah, this is her ultimate, Pounding Blow, this is, at base, an absolutely ridiculous skill, and the reason why you need to kind of fixate on why, or the reason why I'm fixating so much on the skill, is because, in addition to looking like it does a decent amount of damage, I mean, just take a look at how much damage the Thorn took there, right, that was pretty much half of his health, uh, it also knocks up enemies, and if it weren't for the fact that the Brutus here, I think this is Brutus, right? If it weren't for the fact that the Brutus here has an inv like an invincibility that uh, like doesn't allow him to, I guess, you know, get one shot, uh, he also would have been gone. So I don't think I have to tell you quite how significant it is that, uh, number one, damage is being dealt here, and you like kind of act as a buffer with your additional minion spawns and you also provide uh you know buffs to your allies or even just the minions right here she's kind of an all-in-one character and she feels very reminiscent of or reminds me a lot of a character like Cecia, who a lot of people have kind of been lauding and 
a lot of people will arguably place Cecia as the best DPS in the game, just in terms of early, mid, and late game, in terms of how valuable she is, because she provides, again, Mr. Carlisle's damage or, you know, or gives Mr. Carlisle's damage, but also acts as a tank and pseudo CCer with, you know, her, her, in, I don't even know what you would call it, her plant rooting. Uh, so with all that being said, I think that uh, Florabelle is kind of, panning out to be a crazier or a wilder-esque character that is similar to Cecia, but uh, whether or not this character will end up on the rate-up banner or if she will end up on the standard banner, I don't think we know. Uh, in terms of uh, what we know about her, though, she's coming out in, I think, three days, which is really crazy, uh, and that kind of, I believe, plan or that I think that kind of plays out well or it kind of makes sense with uh, the end of Vala's banner, which I think should be at that time. Let me make sure I am not capping Vala's rate up banner yes ends in two days so this is the character that we will be receiving or will be on the banner in two days and i will update this or give you guys a more comprehensive thorough guide for the character as she comes out but from what i can see right now and of course although you aren't able to necessarily uh, force characters to come up or you know to build certain characters AFK Journey is kind of a game where unless if a character is on Raid Up Banner, you just accept, you know, what you have. And however high level you get some of your equipment, that's just how it is. So guides for characters is a little bit difficult because it just depends on who you have imprints of. Long-winded rant aside, I do think that she's going to have a place, especially because it feels like she kind of would take a similar slot to a Cecia. And since this is a character that you can argue that you can forcibly pull for with the Raid Up Banner... Uh, you may be able to now get rid of or only have a need for someone like Thorin and then use four Wilders if that's the composition that you want to use with someone like Damien or Hewan or even characters like Laika and Iron, whichever of these characters you choose to pair with her. It feels like now you aren't so forced into a composition that must use Thorin and Cecia or if you want to use Cecia, now you aren't forced to only use, you know, uh like a pairing or lose a faction bonus pairing. Now it looks like if you want a character that's similar to Cecia, and of course we're going to have to see and wait exactly for how much damage and how efficient uh, the utility or the CC is on Florabelle. But it feels like you could maybe replace a character like Cecia with Florabelle, uh, at least from, an, uh, again, initial glance. Now, like I mentioned, uh, the crowd control, again, is something similar to the Mr. Carlisle uh, utility that he provides. Tiny Sharpshooter is just the damage dealing. And the, where is the, the overgrowth? Overgrowth, again, uh, a buff and a shield for a number of your allies or just specifically the minions that you have. Regardless, uh, them being attacked or them taking damage seems like it would be impactful. I think they can take damage too. I, I just want to double check because I don't think I'm actually seeing that. Are they taking any damage? I don't know. It looks like they're taking damage. If they can't take damage, I think the, the shield or the blue bar here would be a little bit uh, unusual. I could also be mistaken. I think that I'm pretty sure the blue bar is the shield. I'm not exactly sure why they're not hitting. But in any case, uh, having the, uh, the buffs and having the additional hits nonetheless is nice because it's additional hits. It's more damage. And even if it's not a barrier or even if they aren't summonable minions that take damage for you, dealing additional damage to enemies in general is kind of the name of the game when it comes to characters of the Cecia and or Florabelle archetype, which is a summon minion that also provides utility to the team and also does damage. In any case, I think that, again, you're probably going to be running a team composition with her that involves characters like Grandma Dani, Damien, or Hewan, whichever you have more imprints of, and then probably finish off your composition with someone like Laika, or Byron or Iron, whichever the characters that you have. However, guys, I do think this is going to be a really cool character. Uh, whether or not you end up pulling for her, we'll have to see, but I've personally been saving a couple of my imprints after getting one or two copies of Vala, but... Her being a wilder character specifically makes her really, really promising, especially for climbing or progression when it comes to the AFK stages and AFK journey. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you again for watching. She looks cool. I'm excited for her. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. But yeah, thank you again for watching and supporting all my content, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, I will catch you guys on the next one. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Good night.